Hello and welcome everyone to another video by the AM Academy. What I have right here is an old VW front grill. Now what I, do, what I want to do with it is scan it using the Freescan UE7, a handheld blue light laser scanner by Shining 3D. I've already done other parts in the past such as the car tire and this front of a scooter, but today I wanted to do this part because it is actually traditionally very difficult to scan. It is black and it has all these little uh, ridges right here that are very difficult to pick up for a laser scanner or a, a 3D scanner in general. So I just want to see how well this works. I am not quite sure yet. I haven't tried this one out. So uh, if it does not work on the first try or as well as I hope, please bear with me. We'll have a look at just uh, how well it actually works. So I'm going to create a new project group, overwrite my test folder because I don't need the files that are in there. In the previous videos, I've already gone over the question of what resolution to use. Use one that fits the size of your model. In this case, medium detail is entirely fine. A 0.5 millimeter distance between my point cloud points is uh, entirely sufficient for what I'm trying to do here. Now, I uh, I'm going to scan this and keeping it on normal settings for now. I might move it to reflective or black uh, throughout the scan in order to try and get a better result. So using the start button on the back of the scanner, I get my preview with my markers and I'm going to make the software big again so you can see that. And what I'll also be doing is I'll have a stopwatch running in the corner so we can see just how long I take until I'm satisfied with my result. I click the start button on the scanner a second time to start picking it up. We can already see that I mostly get table, but I do get a bit of my front grill as well. So this is gonna take a bit. I'm gonna do a lot of trial and error to try and get most of the geometry picked up. So it's really struggling here on the back with the surface, so I'm going to stop this actually and I'm going to click reflective because while it is also a black surface, it is very highly reflective on the back side and with all the lighting around me, it's quite possible that that makes it extremely difficult for the scanner. So I'm just going to go back in and keep it on reflective and yes, we can see nicely how now the uh, scanner struggles far less trying to uh, pick up the geometry and my cable is getting not short it was just stuck a bit but yes the 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 changing to reflective made a huge difference trying to pick up this entire back part of the uh, of the grill now I can try and pick up the top surface some of the front and don't worry about the table I'll be getting rid of that one later on uh, that is no problem so I think I like that. I'll move back to the other side, try and pick up a bit more here because I barely got anything of this whole side where the, uh, I believe it is the, the front lights, the headlights, where they would go. Then let me try and get around to the side. Doesn't really work. There we go. Now I've got that side as well. Uh, try and get some more of the inside on the other side as well. Well, I did get some of it. This one is a far, a far more challenging model than the ones we've done before. It's far more difficult than the tire or that scooter front, just because of the, uh, the way the geometry and the layout of this part affects our scanning results. So I'm gonna flip it over so I don't have to walk around in front of the table and block the camera view. So I'm just going to start back up. It'll have to reorient itself, find its markers again. And now I can try, pick up the side here. Come on. Very nice. Now I've got some of that. And then I will move around the front. Pick up most of that, I think. Yes, that looks pretty good. Uh, try and get some of the inside of that headlight. Okay. And now we can actually get to one of the main parts, which is all these little, uh, well, fins, I guess is what I can call them. Uh, I'm sure there's a better word in English, but I can't come up with it right now. Uh, so I'll just carry on like this. 
We have the entire front area scanned. Got most of the fins, missing some right there. I think this already looks pretty good. Cons all things considered. Try and get a better look from the top down to really pick up as much as I can. But uh, I think this is where it'll start struggling. Okay, so let's pause the stopwatch and actually have a look at what we've done here. Um, yeah, I I actually really like the entire center part of my of my grill. That looks really good. Where I really struggled was this outside area. Uh, extremely difficult to get a good look at that, just because of the corners. Uh, I assume that with more markers uh, that I placed a bit better, I could actually uh, have a better quality result on that as well. Uh, I just didn't want to put too many markers all around the model. Uh, especially the inside of these uh, headlight bays is uh, was a real struggle. I've gotten the outside down pretty nicely. But I think this is actually fine uh, for a for a first scan. And now uh, I want to get rid of all this table that I picked up. So I'm going to click the uh, cutting plane tool. And uh, instead of creating a straight line, because it's not really what I want, I can't use the markers this time because I don't have any markers on my table. So what I'm going to do is actually fit the point cloud. And what it lets me do when I hold down shift, I've got this little marker. And now I can just paint areas of the table. And I'll not just use one area because I want all these areas to be gone. And I also make sure to, uh, so one of these table scans here is from before I flipped it and one is from afterwards. And I make sure to get uh, areas from both into my point cloud selection. So let's just do this. And then I'm gonna click create plane. And it didn't actually work as nicely as I had hoped uh, where it uh, just basically selects the whole table for me. But now I can manually raise this a bit until it just gets the table like this and then click apply and what it does now it cuts away all the table that i scanned but it should hopefully have left and yes it does look good left all my connectors here alone that i did pick up as well that are resting on the table you have to keep in mind that's what's touching the table is this connector right here and the cutting plane only eliminated the table, left all of these connectors intact, so I can have them in my scan results. I can see them. I've got these front connectors as well. So if I wanted, you know, to have this in a CAD program, a CAD software, in order to determine where my car would need to have a hinge, a snap fit, something like that, this would be entirely sufficient. I'm gonna let it generate a point cloud out of this, and it is truly impressive. Again, I didn't practice this model. I hadn't tried it before. I arbitrarily put some markers on it, and it only took us four minutes to get a reasonable scan result. Now, with more time invested in this, with more practice, with more markers, I could probably get an even better scan result. But for a four-minute process, this is crazy good. Um, so once again, this scanner just keeps delivering on every part I throw at it, uh, no matter how difficult I try to make it. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Uh, this scanner is, is truly impressive, and it does have a bigger brother, the UE11 as well, which is even more, you know, sophisticated. It has more laser line crosses, it'll pick up parts even faster, it can cap, uh, the, the UE11 can capture over 11 million points uh, per second, basically, and uh, yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite satisfied with this scan result. Uh, I will let it mesh this model. Uh, it is once again an unwater type model and I'll actually reduce the filter because I don't want it to uh, remove any of these areas out here uh, of my headlight bays because I haven't scanned that many, uh, that much of them. Uh, they were very difficult to pick up so I don't want to cut away the little bit that I have uh, with the software. I'm gonna wait real quick. Shouldn't be too challenging, the part isn't too huge, and as I only chose medium detail for my resolution, the point cloud isn't too complex either. So, just gonna wait for this real quick, and then have a look at the end result. Hopefully be satisfied. Um, let me have a look. I can see all my fins, and what we can see now is that 
this is an issue with uh, this type of model, my markers are almost always sitting on an edge, which makes it very difficult for the software to close up the holes where the markers were. Um, if I wanted, you know, a that that depends on you whether you mind this or not. Uh, I could go back. I could uh, replace some of my markers so this doesn't happen. Um, but for my intents and purposes, this is fine. I get my connector right there and right there, and I have the the snap fits all of them right here. So all my connections are quite obvious, and I have enough of the headlight bay as well to determine, okay, this is where the lamp goes in, I can have the diameter uh, figured out quite easily. So for my intents and purposes, this 3D scan is entirely sufficient. If this does annoy you, well, with more time, as I said, a bit more effort, you can improve on this. But for four minutes, this is great. I'm just gonna click confirm. I'm gonna save this to my uh, desktop, just as the uh, front grill, and uh, yeah. Keep that for the future, I can work with this. So, I think that's all I have right now. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you do have any questions or comments, please put them below the video. And I, uh, well, I hope to see you next time. As always, have a wonderful day, and uh, I hope you come back.